going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. And the instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit, All right, let's be very clean. clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money. We save this amount of billion, we spend it back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity as long as we leave the customs union, because that's crucial. We can then have a free port, yeah, yeah. Sorry, and sorry. free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion unless our negotiators are incredibly weak, and that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union. Because if they haven't got 39 billion of our money, they are bust. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course it's true. Every business person knows that. And this is the worst deal ever in history, to pay £39 billion for nothing guaranteed in return. Please welcome to the stage, Richard Tice. <laughs> Wow, wow, here we are in sunny Wales. It's always sunny here, isn't it? Sunny in Merthyr Tydfil, welcome Brexiteers. Thank you very much. And some of you have had to work quite hard just to get in the car park. Unbelievable, isn't it? That some people would try and stop free speech, try and stop democracy. But we know that we've got right on our side. I'm Richard Tice. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I've been involved in running small businesses, medium and large. I've been involved in building thousands of homes, creating tens of thousands of construction jobs. And I sort of had a vague interest in politics, which grew. It's almost taken over the day job, actually. Um, and I must confess, I was a member of the wrong political party. I know, I know. Uh, actually, you're much nicer. Some crowds give me a really hard time for that. <laughs> um, but I accepted the invitation uh, five weeks ago, when we launched, to be the chairman of the new Brexit party. And I think it's fair to say, we've been quite busy in the last five weeks. Uh, we really have uh, taken the political world by storm. Uh, you know, we've made huge progress in the polls. We've been holding rallies all over the country, whilst other people like Change UK, they've had a small sort of book club launch in a room. <coughs> um, so let's just see the, uh, the launch video of the Brexit party uh, just on the screen here, hopefully if the technology works. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country, and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. So I just want to make sure you haven't all gone to sleep. Uh, let's have your placards up. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Excellent. You're all on side. Uh, better than our politicians, of course, who have just completely and utterly humiliated us. 
the scene of our Prime Minister writing not one, but two begging letters in the space of a fortnight to overseas leaders and bungling Brussels bureaucrats, begging letters asking how we can conduct ourselves and run our economy. It's an absolute outrage. Incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, and MPs trying to do dirty, nasty, dodgy deals in back rooms against the democratic will of the people. It's an absolute disgrace. They... I don't know whether the Prime Minister's hard of hearing, but she's tried to get this horrendous worst deal in history through the House of Commons, not once, not twice, but three times. And now, we hear in the last 24 hours, she's going to try again. When's she going to get it? Did you not read the polls at the weekend showing what's going to happen to the Conservative vote, hopefully, in next week's European elections? It's going to completely collapse. It's unbelievable. So these MPs, they're trying to sell our great nation down the river, tying it up into a straitjacket and giving the key to the padlock to these people in Brussels. The civil service have shown to be completely and utterly woeful. They've been involved in negotiating this the worst deal in history. Why? Because they don't believe in it. Who on earth would send into battle, into a negotiation, people who don't believe in what they're negotiating for? You wouldn't do it when you're going to go and buy a car or a house. Why on earth would you do it when you're trying to do a great deal for our country? Enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. This country deserves so much better. It really does. And that's why we launched the Brexit Party, because we knew, we knew, that enough is enough. We are a strong, proud, incredible nation. We always have been, and we are poised to go from strength to strength. But it requires competent, capable leadership. It requires politicians of experience, who've done something, achieved something, know how things work. And that's why we're so proud of the 70 candidates, MEP candidates, including those that you'll hear from for Wales shortly. The quality of them is truly outstanding. I believe that it's the highest quality group of candidates that have ever stood for public office in a generation. The vast majority of these people never thought that they would be tempted to run for public office. But they, like Nigel and I, just said, we've got to do something. We cannot allow this to go on anymore. Enough is truly enough. I believe, we believe, that actually the great British people want strong leadership. They want politicians who know how to get things done to make things happen who know how to spend our tax ca taxpayers' cash. It's not government money, it's our money. Taxpayers' cash. And we should be spending it wisely, properly, smartly, cutting out the waste. Because that way, we could have so much better public services and infrastructure. But to do that, you've got to have competent, capable people, basically following common sense politics. And that is what we stand for. Our slogan is simple. And it's clear, we're here to change politics for good. And the first thing we've got to do, all of us, we've got to make sure that not only we vote, but your family, your friends, your friends of friends, they've got to vote in this European election. It's never been more important. Never has the opportunity been greater for change. Never has the, never has the appetite been stronger for change. And now is the moment, ladies and gentlemen, when truly we have to send that clear message to Westminster. We told them once three years ago they didn't listen. They're still not listening. So let's make them listen next Thursday at the ballot box. <clears throat> because let's be very clear, a vote for the Brexit party is a vote for a clean, simple WTO Brexit. It's also a vote <clears throat> It's also a vote that some of our candidates 
many who've been very successful in business and know about negotiation, we demand that some of our candidates play a significant role in the future negotiations. We will have the greatest direct democratic mandate for our candidates to go into that negotiating room. And I look forward to the Prime Minister's response if she loses and if we win and she tries to refuse us. So spread the message, ladies and gentlemen. We have the confidence in our great nation and we, the Brexit Party, and we Brexiteers, we believe in Britain. Do we believe in Britain? Yes. Which brings me on to the first of our fantastic candidates for Wales. He's been an entrepreneur. He was involved in the, home, in the social care business. He employed some 200 people before he became an MEP, which he's been since 2014. It's fantastic to have him back with us. Before we welcome Nathan Gill to the stage, I think we've got a video of him in action. This is not what we voted for. It said very clearly on the ballot paper to stay in the EU or to leave. It said nothing about arranging a deal. It said nothing about triggering Article 50. It said nothing about any of these delaying tactics. All of these um, claims that they made, not one of them have proven to be the reality. Our economy has boomed, whereas other economies within Europe have gone downwards. It's a national disgrace. And quite frankly, I am furious that this is the best deal that she could get. Quite frankly, my 14-year-old son could have negotiated a better deal than this dog's dinner. Here we are, Nathan Gill, all right? Wow, Merthyr Tidville, who would have thought that we could come here and that we could attract such a crowd as this? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for making it across the barricades. They love democracy so much that they want you to get here and listen to what we have to say. It's bonkers. It's extremely significant that we're actually here. We could have picked one of dozens of towns in South Wales, but we decided that we wanted to have this rally here in Merthyr Tidville because Merthyr has been at the forefront of British history in the past, and we want you to be a part of British history in the future. <laughs> now, <clears throat> of course, we all know about the Industrial Revolution. Did you know Merthyr Tidwell had four of the largest steel factories in the entire world here? And looking, looking out today at the beautiful countryside, it makes you wonder what it must have looked like back then. Politically, Merthyr Tidville has also been very crucial. In 1900, the people of Merthyr voted for Keir Hardy to be their representative in the Houses of Westminster as their MP. Now, Keir Hardy was a founder member of the Labour Party. He fought for workers' rights, and for, their, and for the rights of women to vote as well. 116 years later, there was a very important referendum, which I'm sure many of you can remember. In fact, it was the referendum to end all referendums. Now, yesterday I was looking through my notebook at some of the notes I've been ma making throughout my political career, and I turned to the 2016 campaign during the referendum and I had written in there a, a soundbite that I wanted to say on TV in a debate. And it was, you must vote in this referendum because it will be your last chance to have a say. Well, how wrong was I? Because they didn't listen, did they? They didn't take your, your vote for, for, for fact. They just decided that actually you got it wrong. You didn't know what you were voting for. And in the best tradition of the EU, do it again and again until you get it right. All four of the Labour MEP candidates think that you didn't know what you was voting for. And all four of them want to have a second referendum here in Wales. It is... <laughs> 
It's unbelievable, isn't it, that these people can actually stand and say that they are Democrats, that they believe in democracy. How can the MP from Merthyr Tidville feel that they can walk down the high street of Merthyr when 56% of the people here voted to leave, knowing full well that you know, they and the AMs want you to have this second vote? It's an absolute disgrace. Wales voted to leave the EU. A lot of people forget that. A lot of people think that it was just over the border, our big neighbour in England. But it wasn't. The Welsh voice needed to be heard. We were loud and we were proud and we said that we knew that we were better off out. The Labour Party of today does not represent the Labour Party of Keir Hardy. It has changed beyond all recognition. Over the last 119 years, the ideals and the reasons for the Labour Party to exist, they've been watered down and eroded to the point that now the Labour Party only exists to serve the Labour Party. If you disagree with them on any issue, you will be ostracised and banished from their ranks. Last night I was campaigning in the Gernos estate here. I was amazed at the number of people that were coming out to their doors and saying to me that they were never going to vote for Labour again. Here in Merthyr Tidville, it's incredible. Something is in the air, isn't it? Something is changing and goodness me, doesn't something need to change? All over Wales, we are hearing similar messages from Labour and Conservative members and activists. The Brexit party is the new movement. It's here because we have come to the realisation that actually the two-party state is broken. It serves no one but the two parties themselves. And the biggest example of this, of course, was the referendum. You were told, you tell us, you have your say, once in a generation opportunity to tell the Prime Minister, to tell the members of Parliament in Westminster, and what did they say? They will do exactly what you tell them. Unless, of course, you tell them what they didn't want to hear. The people of Wales voted 52.5% to leave the EU compared to 47.5% to remain. Of the local authorities, there's 22 here in Wales, 17 voted to leave, including this one. Mertha Tidville voted 56.5% to leave. Caffili, they did a little bit better actually, 57.6% to leave. And good old Bladder Gwen, 62% to leave. And yet you've got Labour MPs and AMs who disagree with you and want you to vote again till you agree with them. You knew what you were voting for. You knew what Brexit meant because I know you're not stupid. And it's an absolute outrage that our politicians think that they know better than you. You didn't vote for a deal to be aligned closely to the EU, to stay in the customs union or the single market. None of that was on the ballot paper. It just simply said, remain a member of the EU or leave the EU. We knew what we were voting for.